sustainability can be improved. Mm. And uh, the cholesterol is another story that is uh, there's so much more to cholesterol other than what we've taught in medical school. Mm. Can we dive into cholesterol just a little bit? Yeah. Cause, because it's a very general question. A lot of time yes. it comes up, especially yes. with clients I train in person, yes. online, through the podcast. People yep. are always asking about cholesterol. Yeah. And I've done a lot of research myself. And, okay. and obviously there's a lot of conflicting yes. stuff out there. Yeah. So can you just explain cholesterol? What is cholesterol? Yes. So cholesterol is a little particle inside our body. It's little fat molecules. Our body, our body actually needs cholesterol. So it's actually really essential to have cholesterol in our diet and in our body. These little fat molecules, our body also make cholesterol. And uh, we need cholesterol for our hormones. We need it for our cell membrane. And it's not a dangerous thing that we have cholesterol. So eating healthy fats will improve our cholesterol. And if our body doesn't have enough cholesterol, our body will make it to sustain what we need to function. And um, what happens is uh, it's, there's different types. There's in the cholesterol profile, there's different things that we can look at. There's total cholesterol. There's a little particle called triglyceride. Triglyceride is a little fat molecule that it actually goes up when you're eating too much carbs. So that is a marker of if you're metabolically not healthy, the triglyceride goes up. Mm. There's also HDL. We call it good cholesterol, and it's good to have good high HDL, good cholesterol. And then there's LDL, which everybody calls it bad cholesterol. And it's actually so much more to LDL than bad. So it's not all bad. There's actually different types of LDL called the big fluffy LDL type 1 and 2. And then there's small and dense LDL 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's actually studies showing that the smaller, the denser is more increases your risk of clogging in the arteries. We call it atherosclerotic and increasing risk of heart attacks and strokes. So the small dense LDLs are no good, but the big fluffy LDLs are actually great. So when you measure, it is the whole, the all of the LDLs, including the big fluffy and the small dense. Mm. Quite often people going into low carb, real food, ketogenic, good healthy lifestyle, their body actually makes more cholesterol, total cholesterol, as well as the big, fluffy, good LDLs. And there's less small, dense LDLs. And I can actually organise a test called LDL subtraction, which most doctors haven't looked into the science. And this is what I unlearned and relearned, that um, if we measure these particle size of the LDL, that we can actually find out what you, what's your predominant type of LDL it is. Is it good type of big fluffy LDL or small dense LDL that is oxidized by things. And what I mean by the things is the not so good things in your lifestyle. For example, glucose, um, processed foods, seed oil, vegetable oil, uh, pollution will also do that. Mm. And stress, all those things can oxidize this good big fluffy LDL and becomes more dense LDL and that is the not so good lifestyle that will increase the risk of having heart attack and strokes. I've had a couple of clients that have had high cholesterol yeah but they're the healthiest people I've ever seen yes yes and their doctors really want them to go on medication to bring that down yeah obviously we're not giving medical medical advice or anything no. like that but that seems to be very common, having high cholesterol but healthy. Absolutely, yes. So I, I must admit, I myself have very high cholesterol. Mine's about nine and my LDL is high. But looking at my profile, my triglycerides are really low and my HDL is really high. So this is the ratio that triglyceride to HDL ratio is actually much better to look at mm. than the total cholesterol and the, and the LDL. And when I look into a patient, it is not just the cholesterol profile. It's a whole picture. We also look at 
diabetes tests like HbA1c, which is the average blood glucose over a three-month period. We also look at the fasting glucose and fasting insulin, which most doctors don't measure. So fasting insulin is the hormone. Insulin is a hormone that your body produces to ship glucose and make it become fat. And if you have insulin resistance, your body will make more and more insulin. And if you have too much insulin, your body is still managing to not become a diabetic yet, but we can still measure this insulin Mm. and warn you before you become a diabetic. Insulin will make you more uh, storing belly fat. It can make you more tired, more hungry, and even increase your risk of cancer. Mm. So uh, uh, looking into the big picture of a whole person rather than just your cholesterol profile. And I also like to check a, a CT scan called coronary artery and uh, coronary artery calcium score for patients over 40 and over 50 especially to see if there's any existing heart artery blockages. Then that will tell me if you've got higher chance of heart attacks and that incorporate all into the picture that gives me an idea of if you're high risk for heart attacks or low risk for heart attacks rather than just the LDL or cholesterol and giving a statin that way. Mm. So I do have a lot of patients that come in to see me because their pa- their doctor is threatening them that you have to take a statin otherwise they will dis- disown them and don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So I work and empower my patients that it is your choice. I'm giving you this information to empower you whether you want to take a statin or not. And this is the information that I would empower you whether it will be helpful for your journey. And sometimes I do write back to the patient's doctor that look, there's studies showing that if you're patient is uh, doing low carb and the calcium score is zero there's really not much risk of cardiovascular risk and so there's not much point in putting them on the statin Mm. so I do write back to their GPs because these these patients they like the GP and the GPs mean well but they just haven't looked into the science like I did and I used to be that GP five years ago before I unlearned this and then relearned a new way of approaching. Yeah, I'll bet some of those conversations are probably a bit hard to get across. Mm, Yeah. Um, But like you said, being curious, like for everybody listening, just be curious. It doesn't have, just because somebody said something, doesn't mean you have to do it. You can be curious and understand different things. 